Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris M, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, today, we'll be talking about Kundalini and possession. And uh, there's two ways we can go with this. Uh, possession meaning that, you know, a, 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 a non-flesh consciousness trying to take over, you know, somebody's uh, flesh. Or having possessions and the, the whole idea of non-attachment. So, but uh, at first we'll, we'll go with the former as opposed to the latter. Uh, I would like to welcome all of you to this program. I'd like to welcome those who are listening live. We have Fashti and Eileen Laurel, guest 2260 and guest 2368 So hello all of, all of you and thank you for tuning in live. I would also like to uh, welcome those who are tuning in to the archives. And uh, uh, so a, a future hello sent out to all of you. There are some other places that I'd like to say right off, right at the beginning, uh, where you can receive this information in uh, www.kundaliniawakeningsystems, the number one dot com, is the website that is managed by Glenn Ola in Australia, and I'd like to shout out a thank you to him. And I would like to to offer that website to you as a as a as a, as a place to really delve in to the Kundalini uh, awakening that you may be having or looking to have. Another area would be uh, YouTube, and just go Kristen dot Kundalini, and you'll you'll uh, wind up on my uh, YouTube page there. We have 263 currently, I believe, 263 uh, videos there for your perusal. Everything that we offer is free, although we do take donations to try to keep the wheels turning, and they are all very much appreciated. Um, I would like to uh, thank uh, Amelia Santara and her family and clan uh, uh, in the in the kingdom of Kerry in the country of Ireland. So uh, a shout out, hello, and a thank you to Amelia Santara as well. Um, I would like to thank... Eileen Laurel for the many gifts that she has given into this program as well, and and for all of you who who through your 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 donations of time, your donations of attention, your donations of material, uh, have helped to bring this program into fruition. So thank you, and and it looks like Centara has joined me. Hi, Amelia. Hello, Chris. I'm a little bit late. <laughs> How is everybody? May I take this opportunity to say hello? We're having wonderful weather here, actually, since I spoke with you last. And um, our summer has arrived. So if I can, Chris, and may I do what I do um, uh, at every time during the show at this time? Um, you know, I know many of you know by now because I tend to be a bit like a cracked record on this subject, but, you know, prison's only means of income is from the donations that he receives. And the point of me giving you this information is really to inform people that this is the case and to give the venue where donations can be made. For those who have not heard me speak about this before, I would just like to tell you that um, Prism works 24-7, does not charge at all for the information, support and teachings that he gives on the net on the phone and on Skype and in person. But like all of us, in order to pay his bills and continue to give his time 24-7 to this really vital work he does for people who are having a Kundalini awakening, Chris will accept donations for those who want to support him and from those who are in the happy financial position to be able to do so. Now, it's important to say that if anybody listening to me at this time would like to donate but is not able to do so, really, I want you to know that it is not a requirement and there is no pressure at all to contribute. For those who are able to do so and want to, um, I can now give you that venue where there is a donate button. Um, It is on Chris's blog spot and the address is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and the donate button there is very simple to use. 
if anybody listening would like to donate, there is another way of doing so, and that is um, through a bank account. But in order to do that, you can send me an email, and I will give you that information. So my email is uh, Kundalini. Oh wait, Kundalini. I'm getting confused. Kundalini Matters at Gmail dot com. And again, the blog spot is www dot ascension hyphen kundalini dot blogspot dot com. Thank you, Chris, and thank you for that, and it's good to be here. Looking forward thank to you. hearing thank what you have to say on this on the subject of entities and possession. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for making that announcement to me. And once again, um, you know, I started out uh, in my process without having any means. Uh, to pay for even a book. So I get it. And this is why, you know. Right? Okay, yeah. I started out without having any any means, and, and, you know. So, you know, I'm coming to you, for those of you who typically won't be able to donate. So I, I get it, and I'm not worried about it, and, and I appreciate Amelia and Eileen and, and the other people who, who uh, you know, help in bringing the awareness of donation uh, into into the equation. But I don't want there to be any pressure for people uh, to, you know, that they have to do that. Times are tight, and I get it. I do get it. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and jump into this. Kundalini. Uh, will feel like a foreign body within you. It will do things that you do not choose to have done inside your body. And I'm talking deep inside to the core of your being. Certain things will be done uh, with your body, to your body, that you will not have a conscious choice about. Uh, your, Your tailbone may begin to move from side to side or up and down. And you'll feel it moving from side to side and up and down. and uh, This this is not something that you decided, you didn't wake up in the morning and go, oh, I think I'm going to move my tailbone side to side and up and down. And uh, this will be the Kundalini doing this. And so uh, it will feel as if there is a foreign uh, intelligence or a foreign uh, action that is taking place within your body. Kundalini is not foreign to your body. It is not foreign to your body. It is actually quite uh, natural to your system. And uh, because it is natural, uh, it can reach and it can access these core areas within your body, within your mind, within your emotions, within your spirit, within your your ego and, and and your psychology. You know, it can access these areas quite easily. Okay. It does so in stages, you know, what I often, I should say, in stages. Not everybody gets it in stages. Some people get it all at once and it kind of blows their circuitry. But but in many ways it comes in stages so people can begin to acclimatize themselves. Acclimate. <laughs> I don't say that. Uh, acclimatize themselves uh, uh, to the situation as it develops. Uh, often when... Kundalini awakens in a person or is even activated, uh, on a spiritual level, that person is like a red flag uh, attracting discarnate or or, uh, intelligence, consciousness without a body to uh, explore that individual that is having this divine upthrust of evolution within them. Often there are... uh, uh, consciousness without bodies who will try to dominate the body of the person who is having the kundalini and have a vicarious existence through their body uh, without having to to have been born in it or to uh, to nourish it or to nurture it towards the kundalini that it is now having. And this is, is the subject uh, that I'm going to focus with right now with regards to possession. This is 
a possession. Kundalini itself is not a possession. Something that has had you from birth it cannot possess you. It, it is you. You are your Kundalini. You, uh, you chose to, to have this body and to have this experience, and therefore uh, you chose to to have the kundalini that is attendant or, or in uh, in uh, tandem with having the body. And that looks like I'm I'm seeing some stuff here on the chat. Hello, everyone. Okay, hello, everyone. Okay, yep, yep, yep. This is Vermilion. Then hello, Bruno. Good to see you, Bruno. And Feshti and everybody. Uh, good, good. Nice to see you all here. So, this is not an uncommon environment for people who are extremely aggressive, uh, extremely competitive in their aggressiveness, extremely um, upwardly mobile, and um, you know they have a, they have a strong drive to succeed, to be first, to um, to dominate other people. Um, these people, if they have a kundalini awakening, can often attract uh, those types of entities that will come into them and begin to try to direct their thoughts, direct their feelings, and direct what they do with those thoughts and feelings and therefore the body. Uh, there, are, there are certain gradients of... Uh, of of uh, consciousness that do this, and I'm talking consciousness without a flesh, without a body. And uh, I'm not going to get into the specifics unless, you know, my kundalini really wants to get into the specifics, then, of course, you know, we will go there. Uh, first things first, though. Uh, with possession, you always have the option, no matter how hard it is, to refuse the possession. You always have the option to do that not saying it'll be an easy thing to do. Sometimes it's it's very, very difficult and, and it's a and it's an uphill battle. But you have that option. And I need to 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 place within the context of what we are teaching here. If you're hearing my voice, if you've read any of my material, the option has been extended to you. For people that have not been exposed to this information, the options for them are limited, and sometimes severely limited. Um, I've searched high and low for people who teach this, uh, even closely, uh, the way that it's given through me to teach others, and there isn't that much information out there. I, I'm sorry to see that, because that means that a lot of people are having uh, some, some pretty harrowing experiences with the kundalini. Now, just because you have kundalini active does not mean that this is going to happen to you. This is not a guarantee. But it does happen for some. And it happens for enough people that I felt it was, the kundalini felt that this needed to get out there. This specific, specific level of information needs to get out there. So here we are. Um, if you are an aggressive person naturally, you know, you have those tendencies. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means, you know, you've got aggressive tendencies. Uh, you know, this can this can be called to you. Uh, military people, uh, people that are in the law enforcement can have this come to them sooner than, say, a person who is a preschool teacher. Okay. Although it's not impossible, the preschool teacher can also have, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the attempted possession. But uh, those who exhibit and express uh, harsh, violent, dominating tendencies, either through their job or through their personality or both, uh, can attract this in, in a greater fashion. And I've seen it occur over and over and over again. And... Um, you know, it can be devastating to a person. It can be devastating to a person's family because they see this person go through an absolute and irrefutable change in personality towards the violent, towards the hurtful, towards the dishonest. 
And unfortunately, unfortunately, hi, Mara, I see you there. Unfortunately, this uh, this does tend towards the more challenging um, uh, moral and ethical choices in a person. Uh, so you, 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 you'll hear me today talking about deceit, dishonesty, uh, uh, lying, um, corruption, things of these levels. Uh, the entities that, that uh, resonate, say, with more, um, shall we say, uh, levels of, of uh, forgiveness, tolerance, love, patience, Truth, honesty, strength, courage, fearlessness, mindfulness, compassion, service. They're not really attracted to, to uh, you know, to, to dominating a person. They're not attracted to possession. But, but those that consciousness, uh, the consciousness that is, shall we say, of a, of a, of a less ethical character. Uh, yeah, they're, they're going to have. Uh, they're going to have more of an attraction towards possessing you, and uh, and within that context, uh, uh, you can be on the lookout for that. So, those of you who are in law enforcement or severe uh, positions of authority, physical authority over other people, guards in prisons, guards in jails, police, um, uh, you know. Even, even you know, like school principals or or uh, pastors, reverends, uh, people, people that have authority over the lives of others. Um, you know, this this is something that you want to look at. Not something to be absolutely in fear of. I'm not, I'm not I'm not pushing fear here. I'm pushing awareness. It's a big aquarium outside of the five senses. There's a lot of life. A lot of life. And by life, I mean spiritual creation, consciousness. Okay? And the closer you get to the earth level uh, within the spiritual consciousness, the stronger the resemblance to the earth level uh, uh, comes into focus. So because the earth is so predatory, well, those, those levels of existence that are closest to the earth but not actually on the earth, will reflect a level of predatory behavior. And this type of possession is a reflection of that predatory behavior. Okay? Uh, let's see. looks like I'm having a lot of activity on the, uh, on the chat. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the number out. Uh, we have uh, the number is 347-934-0026. So if you want to call in and you have an issue... Uh, about this, uh, then call the number three four seven nine three four zero zero two six, and um, uh, you know we'll go ahead and we'll address your specific issue. Um, all right, so continuing onward, uh, typically the newly awakened person is barraged with so much phenomena, so much confusing and 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 uh, counter what what would have been counterintuitive. Uh, um, instruction, surrendering would be something that is counterintuitive to our way of life here in the West. And the Kundalini will begin to insist on levels of surrender. And surrender in the context I'm talking about, it's good, I just wrote about it. It isn't about giving up to an enemy or giving in to insurmountable forces. It's about turning a greater level of priority over to the divine within, the Kundalini. Um, a greater level of control over your life and and over the choices that you make in your life. Um, so so realize when I when I'm talking about surrender, I'm talking about letting go and letting God make some changes in, in how you choose to make a decision or a choice in your life. Uh, you know, this this is what we're talking about when it comes to surrender. So be clear on that, please. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Amelia? Yes, Clinton? Is, is Mara... Can you hear me? Mara have, Hi, 
Hi, Quizzen. Can you hear me? Yes. Does Mara oh, okay. Okay, Mara has made uh, two comments. And the first one was, um, she said, um, she has dealt with earthbound since I was a teenager and since my spirit final sleep. It seems like spirits are blocked from tuning into me. It's as though if they try to get close to me, they are blocked. And then she continues and says, I have seen others, incarnate humans, around me go bonkers though. So maybe they are being affected by earthbound. Those are her two comments. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. Um, well, I'm happy to read that that, uh, that uh, you are in some way uh, being uh, protected against this type of thing, Mara. Uh, others are not so fortunate. Um, others, you know, about a year and a half into their awakening, uh, they begin to feel amazing levels of anger. They begin to feel amazing levels of injustice of uh, disparity and fairness. And this only feeds the flame of their anger even higher. And they will begin to lash out. They will lash out at family, friends, strangers, law enforcement, health care practitioners. It doesn't matter to them because the entity that is causing this knows that it doesn't have to pay the price by staying in the body. You know, once it destroys enough of that person's character, it can just leave the body and let that person suffer with the results of that possession. And so this is what I'm talking about, and this is why uh, I'm talking about it, because it's so important for people not to, to, uh, to fall in to the pit that they unknowingly are, are, you know, maybe walking near with regards to that... Uh, when, a, when an entity comes close to you, uh, it may announce itself, uh, knocking on the door or on the wall or the ceiling or showing itself to you or, you know, many of the various ways. It may come as a, as a darkened uh, uh, spot of energy that won't leave your peripheral vision. Um, you know, there, there are many ways. You may hear a voice. Uh, you may actually hear voices screaming at you a lot. Uh, if you're stuck in that lower that lower belt that is closer to the uh, predatorial areas of the earth, shall we say, predatorial energetic bands of the earth, if you're if you're for some reason your kundalini is placed you there, then you may hear a lot of screaming and a lot of really abusive uh, uh, words and and uh, encouragement for abusive and hurtful behaviors. This doesn't mean that you are possessed. Because you're hearing it, just just because you hear it doesn't mean you're going to act on it. And this is the big test. Uh, many many people uh, who have the entity experience will will hear these things, you know, kill that person or hurt that person or do this or that to that person, steal from that store, or steal from that bank. You know, you'll be giving many 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 instructions. Uh, and and some poor souls will act on these instructions. Some people who are possessed will go in and shoot up a theater full of people dressed as some uh, character from a comic book. Some people will go into a school and shoot up a school. So you can see, you can see the importance of what it is I'm talking about. What you can do to protect yourself from this is to make the right choices. And the right choices are always going to be, and I mean always, going to be along the lines of forgiveness, tolerance, love, patience, truth, honesty, strength, courage, fearlessness, mindfulness, compassion, and service. I hope you got that. I hope you got that. I won't have to keep repeating that, but it, I will because it's, it, it is important that people begin to understand this. Okay, it is very, very important that you begin to understand this. Those are the qualities 
that will that will uh, disqualify you from possession. Negative entities, or shall we say hurtful entities, aren't interested in you being a nice person. They're not interested in that. And for those for those who are just along for the ride, which happens sometimes too, uh, sometimes entities will go along for the ride with a person just to learn what it's like to be that person, to, to be a good person, to, to learn. And I hope, you know, typically if they don't, they don't come into a great uh, interruption of the person's life process. I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. As long as the person is in control, the, the person who was born with the body is in control of the body. You know, you're not letting these discarnates make decisions for you, which they will do if you allow them. Okay. So just the same way that the average human scalp has 350 species, of, of lice within the scalp. Uh, you know, you have to understand that we carry a lot of different exobiological uh, presence within our bodies, within our bloodstream, within our skin, our scalp, our saliva, you know, our, our, the, the, uh, the creatures that inhabit the digestive tract. You know, there's a lot of stuff that are there that... that uh, that are not that are, that would be considered foreign to our to our system, and yet they work in a way that is conducive to their existence and in many ways conducive to ours. Uh, with regards to possession, even if it is a kindly possession, you can learn positive things from a kind of possession. Kind of possession meaning that that uh, you learn how to control your thinking, because if you don't, the entities that are there that are embedded will try to take advantage of that. So you learn how to focus and how to claim the seniority over your body. And, and I have people that are doing this, and doing this quite successfully. They have entities, great. Okay, they've chosen to go the evolutionary route with regards to entity uh, uh, discouragement. So if it's a negative entity, and you choose the evolutionary route, well, you begin to to adopt the mannerisms of forgiveness and love and honesty and truth and, and uh, compassion and service and all the other qualities that I mentioned. And as you do so, not only are you training yourself within these qualities, but you're training any, any Klingons, and this is what I'll call them, any Klingon entities, uh, you're training them to do the same darn thing. And so it's a win, 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 win across the board. It teaches you how to teach, and we teach by teach. We teach others by learning ourselves first. And if there happens to be an entity attached to you or, or trying to possess you, then as you exhibit those priorities and those choices and decisions, then they will either stay or they will go. And if they stay, then they're going to have to stay within the high frequency of of. Uh, a divine energetics that you are practicing. And if they can withstand that, then, you know, they themselves may be able to evolve into a higher spiritual plane. But it isn't always the case. Uh, for those for those of us, say, you know, we've struggled with Kundalini for so long, we didn't know what it was, we, we, we just struggled and struggled and struggled for a long time. Uh, that caused us to say to go into a bit of depression, and within that depression, uh, we, we we thought some very very negative thoughts, even to the point of suicide, and and that that level of depression attracted very strong negative possessing entities into our our. Uh, into our radiance. Okay? And so those those entities will try to take a hold of a person. They will try to to curve and control a person's thinking towards hurtfulness for, for the individual themselves or for other people around them. 
And they will come and they will go with this, the smarter ones. You know, they will come and they'll give a little bit of, of poison into the system and then they'll back off. And they'll let the person's natural goodness come forth. And then they'll come back and they'll inject some more poison into the situation and then they'll back off. So they're, they're kind of like a, uh, a Monsanto based, uh, entity. Coming in, pouring poison, leaving. Coming in, pouring more po- more poison, and then living, leaving again. Okay, and as as the poison is poured, the, unless the person is is able to recognize that, oh, I don't want to think this way anymore, then the corruption is is sinking in, sinking in, sinking in, and the relationships that that person has begins to crumble and. And the social environment and the social fabric that that person has begins to go away. And, uh, you know, this can be very, 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 very debilitating to the individual. Um, I've had this experience happen. You know, when I first, when my Kundalini first came up, it wasn't as sweet as, as one would think. Actually, mine, mine was very, very difficult because, you know, I only found out later, uh, because I was being prepared to teach, and and we have to know what it is we teach through visceral experience, through authentic experience. And so I was given many of all of the teachings that I give come from authentic experience, all of them, including this one. Uh, the entities will come and they will and they will try to coerce you, and the more you give in to that coercion, first through fear, because you're, you're thinking, well, what the heck is this? What the heck is this? How, how can this thing be alive? And how can this thing that that seems to be alive be communicating with me? Oh, my God, I must be going nuts. Except that you know you're not nuts. You know that there here is this... this uh, it's like talking to a ghost sometimes. You know, so you're talking to this malevolent ghost. What do they call him? A hungry ghost. And, uh, and oh my gosh, you know, you're you're really having uh, it's trying to take over you, and you're not sure how to fight back. You don't know how to fight back. Actually, there's no there's no set protocols. Even out there on the web right now, you're not going to find any way to fight off these types of engagements. You know throwing a cross in front of them, you know, they'll just laugh at that. Burning sage, well, that's fine if you're an Indian. You know, you're raised in that culture and you have a strong belief that that's going to help. That will help. So will the cross, for that matter, if you're raised in that culture. But, you know, I mean, if you're just a regular person like me, you know, you they look at that, you know, and it reminds me of that scene in The Mummy where the mummy's confronting uh, Benny, Benny the mischievous little guy, and he's got this necklace on that has all these different <laughs> spiritual symbols, you know, from different religions. And, you know, he's holding it up and he's saying, oh, my God, you know. You know, and the mummy just kind of looks at him like, what are you saying? Until he lands on the right uh, religious system. <laughs> Very much like that to some degree. So the first thing that, that you want to do is to stop being afraid, number one. Uh, take the information that I'm giving to you and really take it home and take it to the heart. This is real. This stuff is real. This is not being made up. This is not uh, being foisted upon you by by demons or anything like that. If anything, it's coming from, from Kundalini angels. And the scenario is, is as soon as you start to not be afraid... Uh, the power that may be given over you during a possession begins to be weakened. Okay, so you stop being afraid, they lose power. So they're going to try to do things that make you more afraid to keep their power over you intact. So you stop being afraid. And then you start laughing at them. I mean, seriously, find some humor. Find some amusement. It's actually all around you. I mean, you know... you know, nobody knows about these things, and, you know, and here you are experiencing these things. And even there is a level of of amusement present for you. 
And so laugh. And, and once you start laughing at them, well, then they really, really take a very steep cut in the in the energetic hold they may have over you. That's very important is to is to realize that amusement is strength. Amusement to be amused, you can't be afraid. Okay. You can't laugh when when you're absolutely terrified. I mean, some people do just to try to balance out their terror. <laughs> but when you're amused, you have a very, very strong power uh, over yourself, over your heart, over your happiness. Amusement and laughter is a form of happiness expressed. And this has a, a definitive result on the uh, on the entities that may be parasiting you or trying to possess you. Um, with the Kundalini, you would think, oh, my gosh, well, gosh, with Kundalini, how could this occur? If, if Kundalini is so good and so loving and so happy and, oh, you know, Mr. Chrisom, all these things you say positive about the Kundalini, how would the Kundalini allow this to occur? My gosh. Well, let me tell you why it might allow this to occur and why it does allow this to occur is for you to find your inner core of strength. How can you find something that you don't know about until you're challenged or forced to find it? How can you be courageous without having a reason to be courageous? How can you be fearless without experiencing fear? You have to know what it is you're experiencing. And by experiencing what you have, you evolve through it. It's not always a walk in the park, and I've never suggested that it would be. I do, I admit, I do try to focus on the positivity within the Kundalini. There's copious amounts of positivity. But if you're looking for negative stuff, well, it's there too. You can find it if you're looking for it. And if you're looking for it, I can guarantee you that negativity is looking for you as well. So know this and realize this, and this is why, and know that this is why I focus more on the positive than on the negative, because I just as soon have you adopt a positive attitude about this, not a negative one. So with regard, though, so so possession is coming on to you, and, and one of the one of the places that you'll feel it is in your sexual organs. You'll feel extremely sexually aroused. And this will be outside of the kundalini because if you're a man, you may want to just rape people. You may want to exhibit uh, power and control through through uh, corruption of the sexual action. Same with women. You know, you may want to you may want to uh, exhibit power and control over men by how you can corrupt them into into expressing themselves uh, uh, sexually with you. Uh, you know, it's not gender blind. It's, it's not gender biased. It happens to both people, and so both areas of both people will be subjected to these types of stresses. Okay. There are, there are different uh, forces out there that, that have a different agenda. Some of, some of the forces want to harness your kundalini as best they can. They know that they can't get it themselves, and so they try to occupy a body that is having it. And uh, there, you know, if you start buying into them, they're, they're, they can be exceptionally difficult to to withstand. Although if you practice the safeties, you practice the qualities that I've, that I've read a few times now here in this interview, even they will, will have to leave if they have a corruptive uh, agenda with you. But you have to be mindful. You have to be stalwart. In your position, you have to be stubborn with your love, stubborn with your honesty, stubborn with your truth, stubborn with your capacity of compassion. You have to not want to be bossed around by some damn entity that's doing its best to possess you, control you, and and decide for you how you're going to think and how you're going to be. Some of you uh, have come to me uh, as a teacher in these areas because you have, you know, a possession has occurred and, and I've taught you 
how to manage your your body and your and your five bodies of expression through this type of a of a scenario. And and I just want you to know that there are ways out of this. They're just not the socially acceptable ways that that your society may 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 say is okay. Okay, some are, you know, the compassion and the service and the love and the truth, the honesty, diligence. You know, those things are all socially acceptable, you know, depending. Uh, but uh, not all the techniques are. I would like to uh, dissuade you from washing your head with camphor oil. It's, it's really not going to do anything. You might do something just for a few minutes, uh, but it's not going to help get rid of an entity. Uh, putting snow on your head might, uh, you know, numb the skin, but you're still going to feel the tie-ins uh, from the entities. Um, there are many different things that, that people can do. One thing, though, that, that I have found that does work is to immerse yourself in the waves of the ocean. I don't mean way out there. Stay close to shore, but just make sure that you get all the way under the water. One one system I like is to you go out there where say the water is coming up to about uh, maybe a little bit over your navel or where uh, far enough out so that you can sit down and be completely under the water, okay? And you hold a stone in your lap to keep you there, and you have a stone that is connected to a float. Oh, sorry, not a stone. You have a hose that is connected to a float. And you can just breathe through that hose, and, you know, the wave action isn't splashing water into the air end of the hose. And uh, Or you can have somebody just hold it there for you, hold it out of the water. And, uh, you know, try not to get a jokey type of person because, you know, having breathing in seawater is no fun thing. Uh, or, you know, the, you don't make sure it's somebody who you trust to do the right thing for you. Um and then just breathe as the stone holds you under the water and you take take the breath out of the hose. Just breathe and let the ocean water uh, fill in the nooks and crannies. And I mean the energetic nooks and crannies uh, of, of your body. And this also has a positive effect at uh, entity uh, possessive modulation, shall we say. Once again, if you have any questions about this, the number is 347-934-0026. Um, if you're having Kundalini and you're in your family and you know all of a sudden your spiritual sight is coming clear and you start seeing dark entities walking into your children's room, well, this, this does occur. This does occur. It doesn't mean your kids are unprotected. It just means that where a great light is being given, sometimes great shadows can form. Uh, the kids will often see, you know, these, these spiritual entities, and they can be a, they can be frightened by them. But you hold them within your love and your happiness and your amusement, and uh, those same qualities will help them as well as you. Make it a joke, you know. Some of the more difficult areas of this is, is for you not to get into a depression over this, because you'll just you may feel God. I can't tell my husband. I can't tell my wife. I can't tell my boss. I can't tell my physician. I can't tell my counselor. I can't tell my psychotherapist. I can't tell anybody anything because it all is going to lead to the psych ward or or horrible levels of, of pharmaceutical chemicals being pumped into my system. And you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. You do not want to tell these people anything about what you're experiencing here. With the entity possession, you do not want to tell anyone of a Western science-based modality of health care or, or uh, psychiatric care because they don't get it. It is not real to them. It is just, you know, they've, they've decided that that's a disorder. They've decided that's a disorder. 
of a certain magnitude that requires a certain level of of a mind destroying uh consciousness destroying uh pharmaceutical like Depakote or Wellbutrin or any of these things, right? Uh they they want an SSRI and they think, well if we just artificially regroup channels in the brain, well then everything will be fine. Okay? No, it won't be fine. And it won't get rid of them either. It'll just make you less able to function physically in your life. So just be aware of that. Be aware of that. Now there are some people that you can go on the web with uh, uh, who you can talk to about this type of thing, and I'm one of them. Uh, people who know my teaching, certain other ones, say uh, Amelia or even, you know, any of the Eileen, Laurel, people who who are familiar with this, maybe not from an authentic standpoint. I don't know if Eileen's had a lot of uh, of entity activity, but I know that uh, that others have. Others have, and so... It's important for you to be able to reach out. If you join any of the groups or the communities that I'm teaching in, and I'll name them now, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups dot com or at Yahoo Groups dot com, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups dot com, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Facebook Groups dot com, uh, Kundalini Awakening Exclamation Point and that is also on Facebook, Kundalini, A Kundalini Ashram. Sorry about the phone. A Kundalini Ashram at Facebook groups. Uh, Kundalini Healing at Yahoo groups. And Kundalini Healing at Facebook groups. Um, and I do have uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1, I believe, on Google+. Plus. So there's that group there for those of you who enjoy Google+. Plus. And, uh, and, 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 I have a Kundalini Awakening Systems one on, uh, what's that thing called? Uh, just a second here, let me look over there. I believe it is called, it's the one where all the jobs are on. Oh boy. Well, it's LinkedIn, LinkedIn. So the, the, I have a Kundalini Awakenings uh, thing on LinkedIn as well, a group. And so I will invite you to any and all of those areas uh, to to start soaking up some of this information. You are not helpless to entity possession. You are, in fact, a very, very, very powerful person, which is why they're trying to possess you at all. If you didn't have something they wanted, they wouldn't even bother with you. But you have Kundalini. They know. They can't get it. They're too cowardly to start from from scratch, get a body, go through karma, and develop themselves towards it. They're too cowardly, lazy, and, uh, and, and in many cases, they're just too corrupted. They're too hurtfully corruptive. And so they can't get it. But they think they can steal it. And in some cases, they get away with it to some degree, okay? Uh, but they won't with you. They won't with you because you're listening to this program. Don't let them steal it from you or even try to, okay? And once again, it's not a guarantee that you're going to have this. The biggest, one of the biggest parts of, of discerning whether or not there's an entity possession trying to take place is, is to discern the kundalini from an entity. So, you know, the tail wagging and the spinal stuff going on and the seeing the lights and feeling the love and crying a lot. You know, a lot of people associate crying with negativity and so they're, oh, this is so just not like me. You know, and they cry and cry and they think they're going crazy and so they think it's a negative thing and so they begin to focus negatively about it. Uh, Crying is not negative in the kundalini context. It's very, very positive. And I encourage all of you to partake of the cleansing tears as much as your kundalini gives for you to do. You partake of those tears. Um, it will help you tremendously. Uh, so how to discern between kundalini and a, and a possessing entity is very clear. 
uh, possessing entity will add attitudes of malevolence to it, uh, even subtle malevolence, saying, oh, don't listen to that Christmas guy. He's such an ass. He's lucky so. Just listen to his voice. He sounds so full of himself. You know, stuff like that. Or saying that about your mother or your father. You know, playing upon the uh, the insecurities in a specific relationship that you may have. Say that you've been arguing with your mom lately. And that argument has, has you know, you know, it hasn't been going well, and so this entity will step in and go, you know, you don't need her in your life. You don't need her in your life at all. Get rid of her. Get rid of her. Take her right out. She'll start crying. She'll come crawling back to you, let me tell you. This is the type of thought process that can be inserted into your mind, playing off of your own negative thoughts or negative uh, uh, experiences, playing your emotions like a harp, you know, a, a wicked harp, and injecting poison into your relationships. And so what do you do? Well, Chris and Grice, you're so great at describing the problem. What do you do? Well, let me tell you what you do. You counter that by injecting sweetness and beauty and love and and forgiveness into the equation. Negative entities are not so forgiving. Matter of fact, they don't like forgiveness at all. So what happens when you start putting forgiveness into the mix? Well, they're going to fight. Just like, don't forgive them. How could you forgive that guy for cutting you off in traffic? Oh, my gosh, don't you get it? If you forgive them, then they'll just keep doing it over and over and over again. I mean, they will give you every reason that they can come up for you not to forgive. And I'm going to say, you keep forgiving. You keep forgiving. You keep forgiving. You keep being gracious. You keep being understanding, compassionate. You keep giving service that is love-based where you don't accept and expect to be paid. Okay? This is how you begin to counteract some of these negative-based entity uh, thoughts and, and uh, projected perceptions. Projected perceptions. You don't own those projected perceptive perceptions. They're being they're being projected at you. Okay. This is how you can discern between kundalini and and possessing entities. Okay. Now kundalini will often, you know, once as I said before, it will often make you cry. It's making you cry so that you can begin to exercise the mechanisms in the body that help for purification and clearing uh and pressure relief systems of the body. So this is why you you really need to re uh, redefine how crying fits into your life. Definitely redefine it. Okay. Uh, number once again is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. If you wish to talk, and if you have a question, uh, looks like you can also uh, ask it on the uh, the chat group. And uh, Amelia Centara will, will help you with it there. Um, within the, the context of the entities, uh, sometimes you can see them visually. Uh, I was able to see them visually. Um, they can change their shape, uh, that type of thing. They can do what they... They'll, for me, uh, they would often try to change their shape in a way that would be scary or fearful, fear-inducing. They always try to use the fear card. They always try to use the fear card. But, you know, you, unless you're really, really, really um, obsessed with being afraid, uh, it gets boring after a while. It, it gets seriously boring. You know, and I start looking at them, and, you know, and I start, can't you be a little more creative? Please be more creative. And that boredom 
with what it is they're showing you because they're not exactly the most intellectual uh, forces on the in the universe. That once again adds to your power, the power over the seniority of your body. And let me discuss that a little bit. You own your body. You own your blood, your bones, your hair, all the systems of your body. You own it. It is for you. It is not for a discarnate entity. They're trying to short-circuit the the system. Now, if they want to go through and take a body and be born into a human being, well, that's fine. You know, to some degree, that's open to them. But typically, they're too afraid to do that because they can see how how blind we are spiritually, and they don't like that lack of power and control. And others are being used by the kundalini. Let me talk a little bit about that. The kundalini will use a negative entity in order to teach you specific lessons about yourself. I touched on it briefly a little bit ago. Um, It will allow you to have a negative entity experience in order to teach you about your own levels of fear about your own levels of courage, about your own levels of self-control, about your own levels of emotional self-control. One of the worst things for a demon or a negative entity to have to do is, is to be forced to do good works. That's their torture. And so the kundalini, the kundalini will bring to bear only those entities that it perceives are in your best interest with regards to teaching you certain informations about yourself, information that you would not pursue by any other means. You've got to remember the society you live in. You live in a society that doesn't even believe spirituality is real. It doesn't believe that kundalini even exists. It looks at any kind of kundalini activation or awakening spiritual emergency that is to be treated with pharmaceutical drugs. That's it. That's what, that's the that, that is the menu that the Western society is typically giving to a person. Now I will say across the board that it is. So I cannot speak in terms that are absolute. Okay. It's inappropriate to do so. And sometimes, you know, if I slip up sometimes, well, then my apologies. But because I know there, that there are some physicians out there who have had kundalini themselves, and therefore they know, they understand. Uh, same with some psychologists. matter of fact, I have some psychologists uh, uh, in some of these communities, and they, they also understand. They also know. They've also gone through this. So this is what you have offered to you typically in the West. And so the Kundalini will pick from a broad palette of uh, of choices certain types of entities to torment you with. So basically, in, in essence, forcing you to go outside of your accepted parameters of expression, forcing you to do that, allowing that entity to do what its nature is to do, which is either to share you, scare you or shock you or do whatever it needs to do in order to to push you to your limits, your limits of fear, your limits of irritation, your limits of anger, your limits of negative or evil choices, your limits of personal corruption, so that you this this these qualities within you can be brought to the surface. And so the Kundalini can jerk that entity away and say, ah, Look at these qualities that you might want to clean out before we go any further with this activation or this awakening. Come, come, come to me, Mr. Christen. Oh, my gosh. You have this level of corruption. You have that level of negative thinking. You have this level of depression. You have that level of anger. Maybe we have some house cleaning to do. And the Kundalini will do this. The Kundalini will definitely do this. Uh, one of the other ways that uh, that uh, a person can come in, certainly within many of the Western nations, is through the use of alcohol. Alcohol has the, the interesting ability to carve holes 
into the energetic envelope that surrounds you that kind of keeps these entities from the unawakened. Well, with you as a Kundalini Awakens, first of all, you're already red flagged by the Kundalini itself, and then you go into a bar and you start drinking copiously because you're feeling afraid because things aren't right because, you know, you feel like you're being watched when you're in an empty room. You feel like somebody's staring at you in the shower. You feel angry. You feel paranoid. You feel, you know, quite in in, in many bad uh, ways you feel you feel like you're being uh, you're you're vulnerable and so of course what do we do when we're vulnerable we we go to a bar we get drunk so we're now 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 you're really vulnerable you're really vulnerable and you take a lot of that stuff home and if you have kids you take that stuff home and you take that stuff home to your children okay if you even suspect that you have kundalini, I will strongly suggest that you stop drinking, you stop using methamphetamine, you stop using cocaine, uh, you stop using any of the recreational drugs that are available to people here in the West, and start looking at a, at a, at a purification program for yourself, mental purification, emotional purification, and spiritual purification. And, uh, you know, practice the safety. Go to www.kundaliniawakeningsystem, the number one dot com. Go to the to the menu on the left hand side. Go four down, and it's the safeties. Copy out those safeties and practice those safeties. No drugs, no alcohol, uh, and as much as you can, do some self forgiveness and begin to take out the negative thinking in your life. Do your best to stay away from bars. Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's good. Okay. Entities hang out in bars. And some nasty ones at that. Okay. So just know that. Uh, that's an FYI. Um, looks like we're having some action here on the... Uh, uh, oh, I see. Okay. So... If you have a question about an entity interaction that you may have had or you may be having, call 347-934-0026. This is um, July 10th, Wednesday. So uh, if you're hearing this in the archives, then don't bother to call that number. It won't won't ring. Um, But you can contact me at KF, as in Frank, I as in Ira, R as in, in... Red, E is in uh, Evelyn, F-O-R-A-L-L. That's K-Fire for All at Yahoo.com. Contact me there. You can talk. contact uh, uh, Amelia Centara at Kundalini Matters at Gmail.com. And you can contact Eileen Laurel at Kundalini Living at Gmail.com. So there you have it. There's some contact numbers for you. Um, with regard to the entities and your kids. You need to start to explain to your children what your kundalini is explaining to you, that they do not need to be afraid, that they're the most powerful thing in the world, that no matter how any kind of an entity or or, or dream life uh, chooses to expose themselves, that they are not powerless. You tell them to, to... push a rose in their face and you know, create a rose with their mind and push the rose at whatever entity it is. And let the rose soak up any kind of uh, anger or fear that that entity may be pushing at them. I remember these. I had these two as a kid. I had a lot of entities uh, that would come and just do their very best to scare me to pieces. And they were quite successful at it, I, I must admit. Um don't let your kids suffer this way. You empower them. You empower them. And I know that you yourself may not feel so powerful, but you're going to get there. You're going to get there. And then once again, there is no guarantee that this has to happen for you. But just in case it does, teach empowerment to your children. Teach them how to to modulate their energy towards strength. And, and uh, you do that by being fearless. 
don't be afraid. If you have a child that has a penchant towards being afraid, well, start taking them into into areas of activities that allow them to feel their power and feel their strength. Okay, the Kundalini will help you with this as well. Now, with the Kundalini, typically a uh, a uh, possession will try to be given within the first two years. Uh, you know, these are some of the bright areas of uh, of activity for a kundalini awakened person. And I'm saying typically, you know, I'm not speaking absolutist here. But typically, you know, within the first two years. And so for those of you who are contemplating having kundalini or you're within those first two years, I want you to practice those safeties in a big way. If you're having... Uh, you're having spiritual phenomena happen already, uh, once again, practice the safety. Start strengthening yourself. There's no... You don't need to wait for an entity encounter in order to practice this stuff either. You can start right now. It's free. It's not going to hurt you. The worst thing that can happen is you become a better person. The worst thing you, you can happen is that you'll become a better person, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Amelia, can you can you read Bruno's question for those who are listening? Yes, I can, of course. And Bruno says, Hi, Chrism. All this theme about possession brought to my mind a particular experience that I had some days ago. I was trying to sleep, and suddenly I had a spontaneous surge of energy that dissolved my body perception. Then I felt a lot of energy going up and down, circulating through me. Violet colors were rotating at my mind's eye. At a moment, I noticed a very low voice in my left ear. When I gave awareness to that voice, I noticed it became louder. It was saying things about consciousness, but the experience and the voice itself felt so dark that it brought me fear. So I did not continue with the experience. It was very intense. I couldn't sleep for a while after this. Was this an entity, or was this a kundalini infusion that was stopped by fear? Well, uh, Bruno, you have kundalini, and so... Your, your infusion is continuous and it's ongoing and it's not going to uh, it's not going to be stopped by fear or by an entity for that matter. Uh, yes, yes, I would say that that was an entity inviting itself to begin to control you. But you did the right thing. You did the right thing. You chose not to follow that phenomena anymore. When you choose not to follow the phenomena, the phenomena takes a very low priority with you. And even though the phenomena itself may want you to really, really pay attention, and it may need your permission to to allow it to to have a an influence on you that's stronger than the way it started out, well, once you take away your attention, it's powerless. It is powerless. Okay, so you did the right thing. You chose not to hear it anymore. Okay, you chose... Uh, you stopped it through your own volition. Okay? So I didn't continue with the experience. You see, you wrote it right there. So I didn't continue with the experience. You chose not to continue with the experience. And therefore, you sucked any power out of it that would allow it to continue the decision or the, the uh, conversation or experience uh, with you by itself. You, you removed that power. You removed that option. So you did well. And I'll suggest that each and every one of the people who are listening to this right now and in the future, you have that power to just not follow the conversation. Choose to think about something else. Choose to go a different way. And 
until you give away your power of choice. You always have your power of choice. And even when you choose to give it away, you still have your power of choice. What Bruno just described is is what a lot of you would do just naturally. I would do that a lot, too. Um, I would walk into a house or a structure or something, and and I would feel all these entities staring at me. And uh, this is something that I've had since, as I mentioned, childhood. I could feel entities all the time. And I would just choose not to acknowledge their awareness of me. I would just choose not to do that. And by my choice, did I elicit power over what I was going to experience. You choose not to experience it, and you won't, because you have control of your mind. You have control of your attention. You have control over that which can spark or activate emotional response within you. Now, even Bruno said, well, it felt very dark and it felt scary. Uh, brought me fear, so I didn't continue with it. I want everybody to take that lesson. Just choose not to continue with it. It's that simple. It's that simple. And yes, you know, some entities can come along and they can, you know, their presence themselves can feel like a kundalini action. It can feel like the energy will come up and, you know, a certain color will be given. And You know, these are all fish lures for the, kund- for the, for the kundalini awakening child. Oh, here, touch this. And then, of course, once you touch it, then you get your finger hooked. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by their fruit shall you know them, to quote the Bible. By their fruit shall you know them, which means by how they express themselves will you know their intention. Say, say this entity had been a, a positive entity and, and it wanted to, to interact with, with Bruno in a positive way. Well, it wouldn't have done what it did. It wouldn't have, first of all, uh, forced itself into his energetic field, camouflaging itself as Kundalini awakening symptom. And then coming at him in a dark voice, saying something about consciousness, it would have just freely, it would have kept itself at a distance and just maybe gave him the information uh, through another way, through a less invasive way. Okay, but no, it chose it chose more of a domination type theme, you know, inflicting itself into his energy uh, anatomy and then using that infliction as a way to begin to communicate through, you know, to him. And he did the right thing. He just changed the channel. You can change the channel. You don't have to listen to that station. Just like this information right now. For those of you who are listening on the archives, or even right now, you can choose to log in and listen or log out. It doesn't matter. It's your choice to you, what you want to hear, what you want to do. Okay. You are in control. Your kundalini is in control. Okay. Know this. Understand this. And use this. Don't just listen to this. Use it. Use it as a way to to clear your fear about entities, about possession. You know, the word possession, you know, has it's been greatly abused by Hollywood. And so when we hear the word possession, it's like, oh, all these fear signals go through our, our, our brain. Well, you don't have to be afraid of possession. It's not a guarantee with Kundalini. It's not a guarantee. Sometimes it happens, uh, as it did with me. And, and you have to you have a... You have a challenge presented to you. It doesn't mean you go into fear. It's just the same way that, you know, if you get warts, you don't go into fear over warts, right? That's an entity. It's like an entity. It's a foreign thing. 
you know, it creates a bump on your skin. You just figure out ways to get rid of it. Okay? And if you can't get rid of it, then you change it. And, you and you know, sometimes all you have to do is sour the milk, and, and that which is partaking of the milk will go elsewhere. Okay? And the best way to sour the milk for a possessing entity is by using the... Uh, the aforementioned qualities of forgiveness, tolerance, love, patience, truth, honesty, strength, courage, fearlessness, mindfulness, compassion, amusement, all of these things. Those are your tools of freedom. Those are serious tools of freedom for you. Okay? Follow those tools of freedom. Let them be who you are. There is plenty of negativity in this world right now, and you're not, you know, you're not going to overnight because you're you're adopting these 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 very very good uh, traits. You're not going to deprive your shadow of its expression. In in the world of duality, we always have a light side and a shadow side, and the shadow side is often that which gives momentum to the light side and, and, and vice versa. The brighter the light, the bigger the shadow. Okay? The bigger the shadow, the brighter the light. You ever hear the term diminished? Or no, brilliance by shadow. Brilliance by shadow. Okay. And it's, so it doesn't mean that dark qualities are what the shadow represents. The shadow doesn't necessarily resent any resent anything evil. Sometimes it does. But it's not a guarantee. It can also represent privacy. It can represent nurturance. It can represent the germination of the seeds of what the light is going to become. Okay? So so understand that. Understand that darkness is not evil. People are evil. <laughs> People, people choose to to decide what evil is. Okay, people choose to make that choice, and then they 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 allow that choice to become energized uh, through their actions and their emotions. Okay, uh, so with with that in mind, you choose to do goodness. You choose to to adopt these tools of self-modulation. Now, it looks like we have some more uh, activity here on the... on the. Hello, Ravenese. Good to see you. Um, I get ringing in both my ears. The left seems to represent positive or yes. The right either represents negative or no. When I speak to the Kundalini, this is often where... Oh, oh, oh. Um, often where I look to for response. Sometimes the messages are are misleading or very negative. Uh, sometimes it is very helpful. Um, yeah, uh, you know, it's far too easy for an, for an entity possessing or otherwise Ravenese to tie in and give you a tone in a, in an ear. I would not use that as a as a point of discerning. Uh, so basically, you just maybe use clear audience as a way to talk to entities rather than talking to your kundalini. Okay, until you can discern what is what and why what is what is communicating with you, then I would uh, I would change uh, I would change that. And then Ravenese continues and says kundalini makes it possible to read other people's thoughts. How can we determine the difference between telepathic invasion from humans, disembodied entities, from the astral and kundalini? Okay. Yes, kundalini does give you the ability to feel and not so much read. It's not like reading a book, um, but to feel and to discern other people's awareness. Well, you know what is yours. You know what you're thinking at the time that you think it. Okay, when you're walking through a mall, and you're early in your kundalini uh, expression, and you don't have filtration yet, well, then, yes, you're going to be barraged with a lot of different things, and not all of it's going to be pretty. 
Okay, but you will develop filtration. Your kundalini will be, bring about a, a a mechanism of filtration that will take out uh, the, the broadband telepathy and replace it with a narrow band telepathy. Narrow band, you know, it's basically taking out outside chatter. Uh, but you'll find that you should be able to go broad or narrow band at will. But you only do it in the service of others. Once again, as I've mentioned in other conversations, with the use of, of sacred skills, we only use sacred skills in the service, the positive, helpful, loving service of others. That's how that works. Um, as far as uh, entities, uh, well, you know, see, there's you got a lot of different varieties of entities. You've got big ones, you've got little ones, you've got smart ones, you've got stupid ones. Okay. Um, if you stick to the path, if you stick to the path of what I've outlined here with regards to your, your uh, behavioral modification, then you will know. You will know. And it won't matter. You know, if another entity, you know, is standing next to you and say, yeah, love, 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 well, does it, it doesn't matter then, does it? But if you're going love, 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 and an entity standing next to you is going hate, 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 well, then you know which one isn't you. You know which one isn't you. And so you, 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 you change that channel, just as Bruno did. You change the channel. Disembodied humans, same thing. You know, many just, there are many disembodied humans who have stayed because they haven't been able to move on because they don't feel like they finished and, you know, the, 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 the reasoning behind that, the list goes on and on and on. And they may try to jump into you. And they may try to influence how you are and what you are and what you do. And once again, you stick to the priorities that I have given to you, to the behavioral modifications that I have given to you. You go to the core and you solidify that core within the expressions of forgiveness, tolerance, love, patience, truth, honesty, strength, courage, fearlessness, mindfulness, compassion, service, amusement. Okay. This is where you want to live for a while. Right there. Allow yourself. Allow yourself to be immersed in those qualities. Those qualities themselves have a certain level of shielding that drives away malevolence. How can you be loving and amused at the same time as you're being corrupted and hateful? Think about that. I know it sounds goody two-shoes. I know it, and it does. It does sound that way. And I'm okay with that. I don't have a problem with that. And neither should you. Your kundalini also, as you grasp these behavioral modifications, these loving, grace-based behavioral modifications, will begin to amplify their effect upon you. Amplify their effect upon you. And as that amplification occurs, that will drive out a lot of that which does not belong to be in your system. Some of it gets, just gets healed. It gets healed and it moves on. Some of it, you know, the milk is sour and it goes somewhere else. Because once again, you know, some of these entities uh, have predatorial tendencies. And predators will always go where it's the easiest. They don't like to work. Disembodied humans will typically get healed and, and move on to their next expression. Okay. Any any other questions about this? Um, entities from the astral, these are typically entities that are dipping in. They're dipping in, they're having a look, they're seeing how it is to be a human, to, to go through this big, big school of evolution that's incredibly fast and beautiful and dangerous school of 
evolution of, of enlightenment, going from zero to enlightenment. You know, that's a, that's a big deal. And so you get a lot of attention. You get a lot of astral entities watching. Watching you. Not necessarily trying to interrupt you. Once they start trying to interrupt you, well, they're starting to create karma. Their own karma. And, and that's that's something that that they may not want to do. They may not want to have that. Because that, in some cases, that will guarantee them an experience within the kuna, within the within the human system. Okay. So a lot of these dip-ins you can see is you if, you if you're an astral projector, you can interact with these uh, astral entities that are that are observing or dipping in. Um, uh, some of the entities that you're going to to see uh, entities like say the uh, the all-seeing eye or the eye of Ra, that's not anything that is going to attack you. You may see it. It may represent what is occurring to you. It's kind of like your Kundalini is showing you what is happening to you, i.e., your Kundalini has awakened, therefore, here. You get to see the Eye of Ra. Okay. Now, I can't really describe to you the Eye of Ra, but if you go online and you Google the Eye of Ra and then look in images, well, then you'll see various artistic depictions of the Eye of Ra. Okay. So you may wish to go there. Uh, with regards to, uh, uh, there are just some entities that are just flat out mean. Uh, some entities that will try to possess you are these types. Uh, some people call them reptilians, or some people call them the, the tall hats, the man in, men in the tall hats. Men in the tall hats are just about... Uh, uh, harvesting fear from you, you know, harvesting fear, and they will they will possess you as long as you're giving them a good crop. If you're giving them a good crop of fear, well, then they're going to stay with you. If they're uh, a reptilian, on the other hand, is there to corrupt. That is all it's there to do. It is there to corrupt you, and uh, you know so. If you become incorruptible, well, then it's just spinning its wheels. It's just spinning its wheels, and it knows it. And once again, like many of the other predators out there, it'll move on. It'll just move on. Okay. So remember these really helpful qualities and bring them into, write them down if you need to, Forgiveness, tolerance, love, patience, truth, honesty, strength, courage, fearlessness, mindfulness, compassion, service, amusement. And I might even add boredom with it. <laughs> I found I found boredom to be very helpful with regard to once you're bored of something, well you no longer fear it. One of the things that, uh, another thing I'm going to suggest is, is as best you can, get off of the SSRIs. Get off of the SSRIs. Within a possession, uh, it is not helpful. It can it can actually open the door wider for possession, where, you know, you feel suicidal or you feel homicidal. Get off of the SSRIs. And these are drugs, selected serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And, of course, I'm not an, an MD, and so I won't give out medical advice. So I'll go, I will suggest that you go to your MD and tell them that you want off all of the SSRIs in your system. You take charge of your health care. You take charge. Because your MD doesn't know anything about Kundalini. And probably never even will. It won't even look at it. doesn't even want to know. Okay, he's got 15 minutes with you. That's all he wants to spend with you until he goes to the next person. That's the level of health care in the United States right now. I don't know about Europe. Maybe it's better in Europe. You may hear some birds behind me. We have we have a shelter for uh, for homeless animals here in the back, so you may hear some uh, birds back there. 
If you have any questions, I have about a half an hour left here. The number is 347-934-0026. Many times, entities will come to you in your dreams, and they will try to influence you in your dreams. The Kundalini will also come with you into your dreams. The Kundalini will definitely have a lesson to teach you. Often the lesson is about fear. The Kundalini will help you get rid of your entities by helping you to get rid of your fear. As you, as you, as you go through the different lessons that are offered to you in the dream state, uh, so are you given different lessons of, of purification within your bodies, your five bodies, that allude to the cleansing of fear from your system. The more fear you have, then the more of an entity response you will typically have. The less fear you have, the less of a of a of an entity uh, imbued response that you will have. Entities of a violent type will go for violence. They will go for violence. They will go for competition. They will go for drug use. They will go for anything that allows you to stay in. in in a specific state of, of self-corruption, whether it's through alcohol, whether it's through drugs, whether it's through theft or stealing or fighting, drinking, whatever it is, competitions. Competitions. Okay. The more you compete, the more... Uh, I should say, the more you try to dominate other people, the, the more you leave yourself open to an entity possession. You know, I can't say that, you know, oh, gosh, you know, those golfers, look at them, they're all going to be possessed because they're competing in a game. That's different from what I'm talking about. I'm talking about dominating other people, using your power to strip them of theirs. Do you understand the difference? Sandara? Yes, cousin? Tell them about some of your experiences with discarded entities while I get a drink here. Okay, cousin. Um, well, I've had various experiences with discarded entities. Um, okay, well, for example, some would be not seen, they would not have been visual, they would have been felt, they would have been sensed, uh, but I did have an experience, I suppose in a way was my most frightening, and um, one night I felt an entity come into my room and I felt it go into me, and that was the first time that I had felt that happen, and it was within me. And it was very, I mean, I can't even describe how terrifying it actually felt. And for a while, my thoughts, my thoughts completely changed. And um, it was like my thoughts were not my own. My thinking was not my own. It was like my response, my irritations were not my own. It was like, oh, it was horrendous, actually. And I was, and the whole time I could feel I could feel this thing within me and pressure it was in my chest. But it was the, the, the continuous thinking that went on and what was being told to me that I found very, very difficult to to cope with. I was blessed because prison, um, you know, I'm a private student of prisons and for that particular um, time um, he worked with me and actually I would have been one of the people I'm assuming that there are others, but I was, I did go down to the sea. I didn't have the tube, but I went into the water and I spent a lot of time swimming under the water, sitting in the water, and I found it, you know, it made a difference. I said my mantras, I definitely, it's where I really began to, I mean, I had been using the safeties, you know, they have been the of my practice for a long, long time, but they become, when different things occur, it's, you know, when I really use them, 
And at that particular time, all the things that Chris spoke about, you know, the choices that I made around, you know, forgiveness in particular, around love and patience, when I had those irritations, when I had that entity, you know, when I could feel the irritations, I did the opposite things. And that made a huge difference, plus the practical I, I'm saying the practical thing, but what I did with my body and went down into the water, also I went to the forestry. And I did a few other things that I think, um, you know, I think were helpful for me on, on a level. And I learned how to be not fearful. And that entity did not stay for very long. It did not stay nice. for very long at all. Yeah. Okay. Nice, nice. Thank there you. are other Thank examples, you. but that's, that's probably a good one. Okay. Oh yes, yes, yes. I know you've had other examples, uh, but there you there you see, uh, and I do re- remember what 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 she is talking about with that, and and uh, she did do the work, and she did get into the ocean, and it did work for her. Uh, so so there you have it. Uh, another way that you can access entities inadvertently is through Reiki. Certain forms of Reiki, where you hold your hands out and you say. Healing spirits of the universe plug into my hands. Well, <laughs> that's kind of like just putting yourself on a hook and throwing yourself into the ocean. Okay, the Reiki people often become infected by entities. And they pass that infection on to their patients. Not a good thing. Not a good practice. Not a good thing to say healing spirits of the universe plug into my hand. Because entities lie. They lie. They are not truthful. Now, I can't say that about all of them. Of course, there's some good entities out there, too. But for the most part, until you can discern the good from the the untruthful, don't let anybody plug into your hands. Okay? Don't let anybody plug in your hands. Same with the Ouija board. You don't need to know that bad, and there are better ways to know. Tarot cards are a much safer way to know than a Ouija board. Astrology is another way that you can know. Uh, But with Kundalini, don't go sticking your hands up in the air and say, healing entity, plug into my hands. There's going to be a stampede (laughs) of of hungry goats trying to plug into your hands. So please understand that. And I'm not, even though I'm not a real uh, a supporter of Reiki, uh, because I know what it really is and what it started out to be, what it has become through commercialism, um, I know that there are a lot of good Reiki people out there, and I want to compliment them for the for the high ethical standards that they practice. Um, with regards to uh, Dr. Usui's experience. Um, so, yeah, uh, with the Reiki people or any of the other people that are, or another one is, is mediums. Don't go to a medium and don't think that you're not leaving yourself open to your own level of possession. If you're Kundalini active, then transmediumship channels that that are on either side of the fontanelle can be activated, and that is how a lot of people see and interact uh, with with uh, with uh, entity-based possessive contact. They possess a person by infiltration through the transmediumship channels that that are on either side of the font no. And so, you know, uh, this can be some of the foundation of why a lot of uh, spiritual uh, belief systems counsel that people cover their heads. Like the Yarmulk of the, of the, of the Hebrews and the turbans of, of some of the other sects and the hats of some of the other sects or religious belief systems. Because once you wear a hat, you're covering the uh, trans-channel areas. Um, but it's it's not always effective to, uh, to think that a piece of cloth is going to thwart uh, a possessive entity trying to get in there. But but sometimes it can. Sometimes it can, especially if it's of a low-powered, low-entity-based low, low entity based expression. 
Okay. Um, with regards to two entities that are just floating around your house, don't worry about them so much. If you see a face come out of a wall, it doesn't mean that you're being possessed. It just means that your third eye is opening. Okay. Um, some people like to use salt. I don't, you know, I don't mind any of those things. Um, most, most, uh, I like to suggest is that you stop being afraid. Stop letting fear control your choices and your decisions. Allow yourself to walk free of fear. Allow yourself into courage. Allow yourself into fearlessness. Allow yourself to take responsibility for the new person that you're becoming and choose. Choose the expressive format of what that new person is going to be and how that new person is going to be. Change yourself from levels of, of dominant competition if that's where you're at. Change your levels of vindictiveness, of revenge. Change your levels of holding a grudge. Change your levels of greed. Change your levels of, of sexual uh, excitement if it, if it is of a corrupting nature, such as pornography. Watching people be abused sexually or otherwise. Uh, this attracts those entities that mirror those qualities and may want to have that done to you. Okay. If you're going to partake of those types of things, and, and there are definite spiritual reasons to partake of of, uh, of some of those things on a, in a tantric level, uh, then do so with a person that is not uh, acting in a corrupted format. do so with a person that is not themselves corrupted. I know it looked look like the person is doing a thing that is corrupted, but if it's within a specific format of Tantra or the left-hand path, then forget about Western ideologies of what is appropriate and what isn't. Okay, the West does not understand Tantra. Uh, they think it's all about sex. Okay, so... So it's not. And so uh, some of the practices thereof, Tantra, uh, will, will seem quite foreign and quite um, immoral when it comes to the Western Victorian-based mindset or Catholic-based mindset, like most of Western Europe and almost all of the United States and South America and Australia and parts of Africa. The people who understand Tantra to be uh, what it is, well, you know, they you, you'll you'll need to find that practitioner. You'll need to find that practitioner. Uh, Tantra is none of the corrupted uh, scenarios uh, that the West chooses to to malign it with through misinterpretation. Okay, so. Unless you have any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and and, uh, and uh, bring this uh, conversation to a close. I would like to thank uh, Amelia Centara, my co-host. I would like to thank her, and I'd like to thank Eileen Ravenese, Marazzi, uh Bruno Amadori, Vashji, Guest 2260-242-325-0769-0. I would like to thank you all for participating in this conversation. If you have any questions, I have 16 minutes left. So if you wish to call, uh, the number is 347-934-0026. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, I will speak with you again next week. Bye-bye.